Hi guys and welcome to Motor Beam. This beautiful car from 1996 needs no introduction. It is the W124 E Class E250D, and this is the owner of the car, Mr. Nabil. So Nabil, Hi. thanks a lot for getting your car for the shoot. Now it's tell me one thing. Uh, first of all, tell us, tell our viewers, what do you do? What are your hobbies? And how did you get this car? So I'm in one word, I'm a car guy, and I have a pre-owned car showroom, and in Mira Road. And how I got this car? Well, I just stumbled upon it one fine day. And I love the shape so much. I just couldn't get it out of my, you know, I couldn't just get it out of my head. I, I was like, I had to get it. And hobbies and everything. I was, I think that was self-explanatory with the whole. Uh, of course, I can thing. see that. <laughs> <laughs> so you like analog cars more than modern electronic filled I, cars. I, I am a 24-year-old kid, and I have driven all these new techie cars that yeah. you know that go around all the time, and I never knew what. The car is, you know, like yeah, the yeah. analog feel, the whole mechanical feel of it. So I didn't know anything about it. And once I got inside it, once I got into the whole classic thing, yeah, yeah, it's just something that I can't go back now to all these daily, you know, these uh, uh, outgoing models and stuff like that. The modern cars, you mean? The yeah. The modern cars. So yeah, can I you can. give us a brief history about your car? Like, what year is it? And this is a CBU or a Telco model or what? Yes. So it's a 1996 Telco. It was assembled in Pune, and it was one of the first cars. To be assembled, the first you know uh, luxury brand that's a, that was assembled in India, yeah. and uh, yeah, drives like a charm. Huh, so when did you buy this car? I bought this two years back. As I told you, I was just I had no idea about anything old yeah, or yeah. anything you know that wasn't running or that wasn't outgoing. So I just stumbled upon the car. I got a photo one fine day, and I just. I knew I had to get it. <laughs> and, so yeah. how has the journey been after you acquired the car? The journey has been, you know, a lot of ups and downs. And as I told you, I had no idea about all these cars and how to fix them, how to restore them. Yeah. So I spent a good amount of time, at least a year or so, just restoring it, and you know, getting it down to the the same factory condition that it got out of the showroom in yeah, yeah. production line in '96. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had to run around a lot. I had to learn a lot, and I'm glad that I did, because uh, once the sharks got blood on its fangs, there's no <laughs> going back. This just it's amazing. So let's do one thing. Let's go for a drive in your car and then discuss in detail. Yeah? Perfect. I'm always up for a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, rolling in the W124, and uh, I'm not able to wear my seat belt. Actually, <laughs> what is wrong, Nabil? So the winder that's for this, uh, the spring that is inside the seat belt. Yeah. That kind of broke down just on my way to come for the shoot. <laughs> so small things like this happen every day. That's the you know that's what you gotta keep in mind with classic cars. You have to be prepared for. You all have these to things. be prepared. Yeah. Whenever I go out for a road trip with my family. Yeah. yeah. In the beginning, I tell my mom, you know, you wanna reach your destination, be it Pune, Mamlesh, or wherever. Yeah. You're gonna reach. <laughs> but if the car has break down in the car, you don't have to say anything, I'll get you whatever the, I'll get you transport, I'll get the transport done. But just let the car be, you know. <laughs> that keep is that part in mind. Possible. Yeah, keep that in mind from the get-go. So like if anything less happens, you're like prepared uh -huh. for it. So tell me something, tell me your story from the start, like when you got the car, what work did you do on the car, how's the journey been, what, what all expenses have come up? Mm -hmm. So one, uh, when I got the car, it was in shambles, it was in a very bad condition. The previous owner had done a number on it. And he had done basically every jogar possible known <laughs> to keep the car running, okay. but it was running. Uh -huh. So I didn't like it that way. I wanted it to be bone stock, and I wanted it to be in the same factory condition. I spent everything from suspension overhaul to the paint job to you know interiors and every other mechanical aspect of the car. I restored it completely. I had a lot of issues mm -hmm. because in you know you, when you got to restore a car. You don't know where to go. There's yeah. a lot of workshops in Bombay. There's ten different guys, and if you ask ten different guys, they're gonna get tell you ten different other guys' names. Yeah, that, you yeah. know, you can go there, and it's all about it's all about who you connect with, and you know, the mechanic when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. I have such a uh, relationship with my mechanic yeah. Gangaram Ji at this point <laughs> that uh, last week I have met my mechanic more than I've met my girlfriend. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So tell me something. Uh, what is a good price to pay for these cars? Like some people quote insane prices, obnoxious prices online. So what is a realistic price? price, for price. So a realistic price for a good running car that's in good condition. Yeah, I would say yeah. you know proper condition. 
would be somewhere close to about 5 to 6 lakhs okay okay yeah so my car is for sale as well okay and i am quoting about 6 lakh rupees negotiable <laughs> okay yeah. so if someone wants to buy they know whom to definitely. pick definitely <laughs> <laughs> it's one to four millennial on instagram so on um, tell me i think so once you buy the car of course the journey won't be easy after that so how much should you you know keep aside every year for annual maintenance there's no fixed number that you can go with these classic cars you know no one's mm-hmm. going to tell you like keep 12000 rupees or 22000 yeah, rupees aside yeah. or whatever there's no fixed number it's all about what condition your car is in mm-hmm. and how much you maintain it and how much you want to spend on it so you can keep it you know you can save money and you can keep it running yeah yeah or you can put up your money and you, you can know, go all out and you can go all out and you can roll around in comfort and luxury mm-hmm. and No, it's all about how much you want to spend. But if you have a realistic ballpark figure, around eighty thousand a year. Eighty thousand to a lakh rupees for annual general, like you know. Yeah. Just keeping everything well oiled and everything running without a hiccup. Yeah. And uh, so, when you drive this car in Mumbai now, what are the kind of reactions you get from people? The reactions are amazing. They like, you know, whenever I stop at a signal, whenever I stop at any junction. Yeah, yeah. It's just a head turner. There's got to be like whenever I take it out, I use it as a daily driver. Okay, okay. So whenever I take it out, there's at least five people in a ten kilometer span. Yeah, yeah. Who you know look at the car, who admire it, and who give me a thumbs up or maybe just a wave <laughs> or something like that. Who are who are really happy to see the car, uh, you know, running. And yeah, it's, it's a different feeling. So when you got this car home, home, what was the reaction from your family members? What do they think about this car now? <laughs> well, they they were all like they were shocked. They were like, "Listen, you drive 2018s, 2017s, 2019s. What are you doing driving in 1996? Yeah. I mean, do you even know what a headache it is?" And I was like, "Yeah, that that that's there. <laughs> the headache is definitely there. The you know it's difficult. I'm not gonna say it's a walk in the park. It's not yeah. easy." But trust me, it's a labor of love, you know. And once you get it, you know, once it's once you feel that engine roar yeah. at four thousand, three thousand RPM on highway speeds, it's just something else. It's just that comfort and that whole uh, drive factor. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. So, more. What is your most favorite feature of this car? I'm sure it does not have a lot of features. It has a lot of features, like on the contrary, like you know, contrary to popular belief, yeah, yeah. it has a lot of features for a 1996 car. Mm-hmm. So we've got all power uh, windows, we've got automatic rear headrests, we've got a lot of uh, other features that aren't there in running cars mm-hmm. up like you know 2010, 2009, and it's got a def- it's definitely got a lot of features that are that's quite rare in cars that you know. That are in the that come from the mid segment. Yeah, come from the mid segment in like 2013, 14, 15. And uh, this has a very basic 2.5 uh, liter diesel engine, no turbo, yes, and no. makes around 110 horses and 170 newton meters. Correct. So how is the performance compared to uh, today's cars? Like, do you feel the car is a bit underpowered on the highway, or are you okay with that? Daily driving the car on and in city and on highway, doing highway runs, mm-hmm. I've never felt that the car was underpowered. If anything. I have, you know, I have left a lot of cars with two-liter engines and 1.8 and 1.6. Yeah. I've left a lot of them in the dust. Okay. The power, the mechanics of this car with the Mercedes engine in it and the five-cylinder power. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's raw power and raw tuning, and mm-hmm. it's just it sings to you. <laughs> and uh, what plans do you have for the future? I plan to restore this car completely, or modify it, or upgrade to something else. So this car, I have uh, spent almost, as I said, I've spent a year. Is restoring it, and now it's it'll never be hundred percent. It's always there at that ninety nine percent, as you said, with the seat yeah, belt yeah, and everything. Yeah. Something's just bound to break the other day without any warning whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my future plans. There are no future plans, as I said. This car's for sale. Future plan is to go way further into the past. You know, yeah. now I have a ninety six. The plan is now for an eighty <laughs> six. And yeah, in the coming times, it'll be a seventy six. So it's just you know, I just want to go. Older and older and older. And that's how it is. That's how. Uh, that's how it, it just gets you going. So, have you done any road trips in your car? Long drives. Yes, I have done a couple of road trips with my family. Mm-hmm. So, I've done Bombay, Pune. I've done Bombay, Mahabaleshwar without breaking a sweat. Mm-hmm. There were Innovas and Fortuners on the expressway. Yeah. Just staring at me with like big eyes, and they were like, 
How's this guy passing us? <laughs> I was going the speed limit <laughs> and passing these cars, and they were all just like, uh, "Can this do that?" Mm -hmm. And that shock and that awe was just like, yeah. But I did do a lot of road trips without breaking a sweat. The car has been extremely reliable. You know, that's the thing with these machines. Mm -hmm. They'll get you to your destination without a hiccup. They're gonna give you some trouble along the way, definitely. Uh -huh. But I feel that they're not gonna let you be stranded in the middle of the road. Got it. And uh, where do you source the spare parts from these days? Are they easily available, or do you have to hunt hard? Uh, easily available if you know where to get them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's all about availability. Mm -hmm. The biggest factor there is availability because uh, as these cars are not there by the masses, you know, it's like not used by the masses. So obviously. The demand and supply kind of weighs in, mm -hmm. and um, you have a lot of difficulty finding parts, sourcing them if they are not like you know clutch plates or brakes or whatever. If they're not like mm, routine maintenance, maintenance wala things. Good. So you have a lot of trouble sourcing them, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's manageable. And I'm sure you have driven a lot of modern day cars also, like these luxury cars, Mercedes and BMWs. Definitely. So compared to this car, how do the modern day cars feel? Like you know, they're full of electronics and they feel a bit artificial also. So what do you prefer and why? So from a personal point of view, all these new cars I've been driving them all my life. Yeah, you know, yeah. these newer gen cars with like their fancy electronics and their fancy this system, that system. You've got this and that and that safety feature. So when you drive all of that, it's just you know there's no human touch to it. There's no human factor involved in it. It's just the car doing its car thing. It just has a mind of its own. There's like you know there's mechanics. Oh sorry, there's electronics there that you know just tell the car what to do and what not to do. With this car, it's completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. There's a mechanical. There's a human factor. There's like this whole driver thing related to it. That you know there's a you feel at one with the road yeah. you know you feel you feel the road when it you know as you cover it and you get a different feel for that you know when you feel like you're in control of the car not some mechanics mm -hmm. telling the car what to do or how to go or how to drive around yeah 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 so a lot of these cars come up on sale also frequently not just mercs but even bmw's and audi's mm -hmm. the old ones so it actually makes sense buying one of these right now right it's it's it's, it's a very actually good a big investment right now. it's every it's a very good investment especially with you know the government banning the internal combustion engines and you know you've got these electrics and cngs coming up yeah. now's the right time to grab one of these classic cars and wait for it to you know these give better returns in the you know the from investment perspective these mm -hmm. give better returns then FDs or uh, other investments, <laughs> and you can actually have fun with these. Yeah, you can actually have fun money. while you're, uh, you know, investing and making money. <laughs> got it, got it. So Nabil, it was great talking to you and you know, getting to so know yeah, your W124 more. So if our subscribers are looking to buy such a uh, such a classic Mercedes or any other old car, do you have any word of advice for them? Well, know what you're getting into. And uh, yeah, it's all about learning. It's all about the learning phase, you know. You gotta do something wrong to, you know, just learn what's the right thing. And without doing something wrong, you're not gonna find out the right thing. It's just gonna happen. And yeah, just stay, stay strong <laughs> and have the courage. That's all I would say. So it does make sense buying these cars right now. It right? makes an amazing amount of sense. Uh, you know, they are great investments in today's yeah, yeah. day and age. They're extremely reliable machines. And the driver feels that they have, you know, the feels that they give, they're just out of this world and especially the head turning factor. Yeah. I could walk around with a brand new S class and it just wouldn't be the same. True. People just, you know, stop me at the signal and they're like, that's my dream car from when I was a kid and kids are just, you know, gleaming through the windows and they're just like giving that smile. Yeah. And you just feel that, you know, that feel good factor when you drive it and you just like, you see those kids with that bright smile and that shiny eyes and they're like i was that kid once and it just feels good thank you so much that was amazing so thank you guys for watching this video if you like the w124 hit the like button smash the like button and if you want to feature your car also for an ownership experience do hit us up on contact at the rate motorbeam.com and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you goodbye